Thanks everyone. Today we are talking with Joanne, whose nickname is Joy and wishes she was from Long Island, Maine. She once worked picking shrimp, makes her own chocolate coconut ice cream, and has a unique collection of ducks. Today she's sharing about travel with her dog. So welcome, Joanne. <laughs> Thank you. That was an interesting pick of several of my <laughs> life stories. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way. Welcome, Joanne. This is great. I'm going to start our timer for seven minutes. And we're here to just talk about, yeah, and you're traveling with your dog. And can you just tell us, have you always traveled with your dog? Is that something that's always happened? You know, I, about seven years ago, I was traveling with my little dog. And, you know, you, if they're small enough, at least you can fit them in a little carrier and stuff them under the seat. Well, we were both kind of having some anxiety, a little nail biting going on there. And I kept taking him out of the bag and put him on my lap. And the stewardess finally came over to me and said, you know, there's a program that if you want to bring your animal legally, it's called for emotional support animals. And I've been a therapist for 25 years and never knew about it because you do have to have a therapist write you a letter and do a psychological evaluation. So that's really when mine started. I, at that point, from then on, I have had my little dog with me always. <laughs> Wonderful. So what are some of the best places that you've found that you've been that are dog friendly? You know, I am finding more and more places are dog friendly. And, you know, the laws for emotional support animals truly are for housing and for flying. But so they really don't include hotels or restaurants mm -hmm. and things. But I'm finding more and more of them do. And hotels... If you call ahead and ask, do you accommodate for assistance animals? Most will say yes now. That mm -hmm. is different. So I really enjoy you know, traveling through the, with a car, you know, it, with my animal and staying at hotels. And most will allow it. I even have the little bowl and out front for them. And oh. I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> they just seem much more accommodating than ever. Oh, yeah. So what are some of the things that you look for when you're traveling? What do, when you pick a place, do you watch out for places that are let you know that they're dog friendly, I guess that's the question. Yeah. You know, there's certain um, hotel chains that always will accept animals. Mm, okay. And so I make sure that I tell them, <laughs> I only stay with people who allow my family furry friend to be with me. So it's very important. And so we, I just find that, you know, it's not that big of a problem anymore. But okay. most of our traveling now is to see family. I live on the East Coast. My family lives on the West Coast. Uh, you know, Santa Barbara and that whole region of California has always, and my mom's in San Diego area. So there's just beautiful beaches and you know, beautiful places generally that we go. Wonderful. So how does having your dog change your trips since you started traveling? It sounds like full time now with your. <laughs> <laughs> you not so much anymore. Oh, OK. But, uh, you know, we certainly did travel quite a bit and um, we even did traveling in a motorhome. Uh, for a year, a cup twice, we did oh. it in our in our lives, and always had our little doggy with us, and that was really really fun. But yeah. I find now with flying, I'm not flying without my dog. I'm just getting to be one of those nail biters that I don't want to be on a plane anymore, squished in. And maybe it's not like that so bad anymore. But I just find I am much more comfortable. I have less anxiety. I am really happy to be on the plane. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sense. Do you meet other people that travel with their pets? I'm sure you do. If you're going to places that are pet friendly, do you interact with that? Is there sort of a community of folks that travel with their um, animals? <laughs> You know what? I think it was funny. It's kind of not exactly that. But what I find when I travel with my little doggy um, on the plane, people are so nice to me. And I kind of feel a little guilty. I think they're nicer to me than to people with little kids. Oh. And they even ask, can I hold your little dog if you have to go to the bathroom? Or can I hold him for a while? Uh -oh. um, and so I really appreciate that people really do respond to animals. And, you know, one of the things with research, it even shows that having an animal in an, an environment actually helps to calm the entire environment. Yeah. 
So having dogs with us, I think, really makes a difference for a lot of people. That's wonderful. So what are some advice, what's some advice for anyone else that wants to travel with their pets or maybe hasn't gone to the steps that you've gone to or? Yeah, you do, there is steps and you do have to qualify. And I'm happy to give my website that they can go see for one minute pre-qualification to see if they qualify. And you do have to get a letter from a licensed mental health professional that you need your animal. Okay. with you and there okay. has to be a psychological diagnosis so um you know we'll put that in the show notes yes. then yeah yeah absolutely and and that's to make the make sure that you've got a like a license for the emotional yes. support animal but in some like you said some hotels and other places are are just allowing people to bring their pets you don't it's not necessarily mm -hmm. requiring that it's probably for flights mm -hmm. and other things did i get that right the, um and really the the letters for the person the service animals or medicals are about the animal these are about the person needs the dog right um yeah and ho you know hotels what i find you they do not have to accommodate for an emotional support animal but what i find they will do though is waive the pet fees or the pet deposits for the oh. night so they're more accommodating understanding people need their animals sometimes they've been through traumatic things or things in right. their life that makes them feel like they're willing to do more things if they yeah. have their animal with them yeah i know a lot of people that like to travel and i go to a lot of hotels and places and they you know people have their dogs there so it's a pretty common thing you're right anymore um that's uh, places are allowing that more and more so i know we can't go anywhere right now we're probably not doing a lot do you have a place <laughs> on your list that you would like to be going to if you could, which, um, where to next? You know, I, right now I am living in, in Florida. Okay. And so car travel for me is really great. St. Petersburg and the Tampa area, it's just uh, the nature there is just extraordinary. And that's why I have the ducks, the Muscovy oh. <laughs> ducks. They kind of just found me. Oh, and okay. now they have, and then the mama brought nine of them to my house. Oh my God. So I now have 10. But the nature here is just so lovely. So I oh. really enjoy seeing the Florida coast. Oh, my gosh. seven minutes. <laughs> I know that was fast. Seven that's minutes. Right that is fast. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's our seven minutes. So thanks, Joanne, for sharing your story. It was beautiful. Really great information today. And I'm, I will put your website and information in the notes because I think that's really helpful to other people. Um, and we'll have a new question and answer series. So if you have questions for us, uh, April and I are going to be answering them in a future episode. There's a link in our description below also to send us your questions. And as always, travel with us through real stories from real people. Thanks, everybody.